So here we are in the DNS manager in our domain controller. We're not going to create every single type of record we just saw, but what we're going to do is create a couple of records that are fairly commonly needed in DNS. I'm going to go to the local zone under forward lookup zones. Oftentimes when an exchange server is installed, it won't automatically create a DNS record. Not sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. We actually need to add two records here. First of all, a host record for the exchange server. Secondly, an MX record to indicate that it is, well, an exchange server, or at least one that handles mail. We'll right-click CCF local. We'll first click on new host, and we'll give it a name. It's actually an exchange server, so that's what we'll call it. That's the name of the server. We'll put in here an IP address. Now, if we want to, we can create an associated pointer record, but we don't need to here. So we'll click add host. Now notice we have an opportunity to create another host if we want. We don't need to right now, so we'll click done. Because this is a mail server, we need to add an MX record as well. Most of the time when I've installed Exchange servers, I've had to add these records. We'll right click ccf.local. We'll click new mail exchanger. Host or child domain is not necessarily filled in because we don't have a child domain on this network as of yet. So we'll stick to this fully qualified domain name and the name of the server is Exchange, and we'll click OK. And now we have the mail exchanger record. Let's create one more record while we're here, a service record. So we'll right click. We don't see a service record under our first set of choices, so we'll click Other New Records. And from here, we'll scroll down to Service Location for a service record. We'll click Create Record. We'll cover a couple of test concepts while we're here. First of all, let's click the drop down arrow and look for a service. When you're creating a service location record such as this, it's usually for some kind of web application, security, maybe LDAP for Active Directory, or perhaps even Telnet if it's maybe something a bit older. Now here, we're gonna click LDAP. It's using the TCP protocol. Now if you notice by default, it's using port number 389. Next thing we need to know is the host name offering the service. It's under ccf.local. So let's say we have an application server out there called Candles and it's using LDAP. So we'll create the entry here, and we'll click OK, and then we'll click Done. Now notice you don't see this here. It's actually listed under TCP. There's the LDAP record right there. 